In 2017, a lefty by the name of Josh Hader was called up to the big leagues after a minor league career of about five years, and he dominated. The Brewers ended up winning 86 games and just missing out on October. But without Hader, there's a good chance they would have missed out by a lot more. He wasn't really well known by this point, but he was really good in the second part of 2017, throwing 47 and two thirds innings on the season with a 2.08 ERA, striking out 68 hitters. He was just a quietly good reliever on an up and coming team. By 2018, that all changed. 2018 was Josh Hader's breakthrough to fame mostly for good reason, but some may not for the best. In the first half of the 2018 season, Hader was ridiculous, pitching to a 1.50 ERA in 48 innings, getting named an All-Star, and that's where the memes began. During the All-Star game, fans decided to do the totally normal thing of looking up old tweets from famous people, in this case Hader, finding a number of, well, kind of offensive jokes he had tweeted years prior. The publicity for those tweets being discovered got bad enough to where he had to apologize and claim he wasn't racist. As a child, I was, was immature and I, you know, obviously said something that was inexcusable. Um, you know, that doesn't reflect on who I am as a person today. And, um, you know, that's just what it is. Nonetheless, the year continued, and although Hader wasn't quite as dominant as he was in the first half, he still played a massive part in the Brewers' success, a year where they'd win 96 games en route to a division title they'd secure in a tie-breaking game 163 at Wrigley Field, with Hader securing the final outs. The Brew crew went on to have their season ended one game away from a World Series appearance, and have yet to win it all or make it to the Fall Classic since, but that hasn't stopped Josh Hader from being arguably the best and most valuable reliever in baseball over the years. In 2019, Hader pitched 75 and two-thirds innings with a 2.62 ERA, striking out 138 hitters and recording 37 saves. He was elite again, only to give up the now famous Juan Soto bases clearing double in the wildcard game that year, having their season ended by the eventual World Series champs. 2020 was a lost year, with Hader pitching only 19 innings with a 3.79 ERA. As for 2021, he was back to the best reliever in the sport. In 2021, the Brewers were really good, winning 95 games and winning the NL Central again. In 58 and two-thirds innings, Hader pitched to a minuscule 1.23 ERA, striking out 102 hitters and recording 34 saves only to give up the go-ahead home run to Freddie Freeman in Game 4 of the NLDS, a game in which the Braves would go on to win and win it all weeks later. Hader did not skip a beat to start off 2022. In his first 26 appearances from April 10th through July 3rd, Hader was incredible. In 25 and two-thirds innings, Hader pitched to a microscopic 1.05 ERA, striking out 43 hitters. Cue the greatest bait and switch of 2022. Because Josh Hader went from easily the greatest reliever slash closer in baseball to the worst reliever slash closer in baseball. I'm not kidding. After pitching insanely dominant in the first part of 2022, he began to struggle, badly. And it all began on America's great holiday of July 4th. The Brewers actually won that day, but not before the Cubs took a ninth inning lead on an inside the park home run given up by Hader. The Brewers went on to win the game, but this was the start of a horrid turn for Hader. Two days later, with the Brewers and Cubs knotted up at one in the ninth, Hader would give up a go-ahead and eventual game-winning double to the Cubs. Two days after that, he had yet another appearance where he gave up a run, this time in a win against the Pirates. On July 13th, Hader would take them out with his Brewers tied 1-1 to -one with the Twins, only to give up a walk-off three-run home run. It gets worse. A couple days later, the Brewers had a three-run lead heading into the bottom of the ninth inning in San Francisco. Pretty sizable and comfortable lead to hang on to, even with a struggling Josh Hader, right? Nope. Joey Bart let things off with a solo homer to make it 5-3, with Darren Ruff connecting two batters later for a homer of his own to make it 5-4 with one out. A single, a hit by pitch, and another single would lead to a walk-off grand slam by Mike Yastrzemski. That's six runs on three homers given up by Hader in one-third of an inning. Ouch. In his next four appearances following that ridiculously bad blown save, Hader pitched to a 2.25 ERA in exactly four innings. Well, that, along with all the other success prior to the struggles, was enough to make the San Diego Padres pull the trigger and trade four players for Josh Hader. His first two appearances for his new team were good, as he struck out three hitters and gave up one hit in two innings. Since then... Huh, 
It's been ugly. The Padres were up 4-1 on the Giants entering the ninth with Hayter on the mound. No problem, right? Nope. A walk, a single, a hit by pitch, a walk to bring home a run, a strikeout, another walk to bring home a run, and a sacrifice fly to bring home the third run, Hayter had to be taken out of the game for Tim Hill to strike out Jock Peterson to end the inning in an eventual walk-off win for the Friars. Over a week later, Hayter finally took the mound again, coming in for Yu Darvish, only to hit Luke Voigt, walk Nelson Cruz, give up a sacrifice fly, a single, and then finally the third out of the inning on a line drive to left field. The very next day, the Nationals beat the Padres again. Why? Largely because of Hayter. In the top of the ninth of the game tied at three, Hayter failed to record a single out, walking Victor Robles, giving up a base hit to Lane Thomas where he'd throw the ball into right field, and then a two-run jack to Alex Call, giving the Nats a 6-3 lead and forcing Hayter to be pulled. In his next outing, he did strike out the side, but even when he does that nowadays, he still struggles, giving up two hits in the same inning. And then we have what occurred on August 28th. The Padres were in Kansas City taking on the Royals and were down 9-6 heading into the bottom of the 8th inning. They ended up losing the game 15-7. How? Because Josh Hader. A single, a walk, a double, followed by another double, another single, a strikeout, another walk, another single, a sacrifice fly, a hit by pitch, another single, and a line out later, Josh Hader was finally out of the inning but not before six runs crossed the plate. Since joining the San Diego Padres and making his first appearance for them on August 2nd, Hader has thrown five and two thirds innings with an ERA over 19. No, you heard that right, over 19. He's given up 12 earned runs and has walked eight, as hitters are just teeing off on him as they have an OPS over 1300 against Hader as a Padre. It's not like this is totally random either, as he struggled big time at the end of his time in Milwaukee. What Josh Hader is, is clearly cooked. Can he ever get back to his vintage deadly elite form? Of course, but it looks like he's going to have to work really hard to get back to that. Like I'm talking, we might have to go back to the drawing board. That's how bad it's gotten. Hater basically has to start over. It's not even like he's just been bad. He's quite literally been the worst reliever in baseball for a bit now. And this is coming off of a first half where people deemed him the best in the game. It's crazy. Will Hader get back to what he once was? Time will tell. But as of right now, it's clear as day that he is a liability for the Padres. And the Brewers have every right to pat themselves on the back for getting both current and future pieces for him while they still could. Hader finally got his first save with the Padres, with it being against the Giants, the same team he gave up six runs against on three homers, working around a leadoff single to record three outs and secure the win. Finally. Does this mean he's back? Absolutely not. We're going to need way more of a sample size to see that, but it's on the right track, of course. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.